Hello everybody, this is Alan Underwood with CodingBlocks.net and in today's video I want to go over something that came up in a discussion in episode 55 of the podcast where we were talking about writing classes the right way and there was a discussion between Michael Outlaw and myself where we were talking about public properties versus public variables in C Sharp and how they look the same, but they really act different underneath the covers. And so I wanted to demonstrate that because if you if you listen to that and you're not familiar with C Sharp, then you probably have no idea what we're talking about. So I kind of wanted to just give a peek into that here. So all I've done is I've created a simple console application, a .NET Core console application that I'm going to just show and demonstrate what the differences between the two are, even though on the surface they look like they're basically the same, but underneath the covers they actually do something very different. And in doing things with the public property actually gives you more features that can come into play and can be quite important. So here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a class and I'm going to create this class called person because it's real easy to just sort of demonstrate in this notion that people can pick up fairly quick. So I don't know why my VM is running so slow right now. But here we go. So let's call this person.cs. And here I'm going to do a few things. So we're going to create a public string first name. So we're going to make that just a public variable. And this is what we're saying you don't want to do, but we'll get to why here in just a little bit. And here we're going to do public string last name, but we're going to make this an auto property. And so in C sharp, we'll see what that means here in just a second. And something I also want to do just for demonstration purposes is we're going to do public override string to string. Oops, what happened there? And I don't want that. What we're going to say is return string dot format and in here we're going to say first name last name oops this is spanning multiple lines we need that last name all right so That'll get us a little output that will be, you know, nice and easy to see. So over here in program CS, we're just going to do a little test. So what I want to do, actually, let's uh, let's also create an empty constructor here. So let's make this if this is an empty constructor, we'll say first name equal just so it's obvious and last name equal that and we'll create a nice constructor as well Oops. all right so here we'd say first name equal Right, so pretty pretty vanilla stuff, nothing special that we're seeing here. Um, but we'll get into what the real differences are here in just a second. So let's do this, var a person equal new person. All right, and let's do a console.write line a person. It'll automatically call our two string override on that thing. And then let's say, all right, well, we should see NA, NA there if we do that. So let's do a console.read line or read key so that our console app will stay open. So let's go ahead and run this thing. And we should see when this comes up that we're going to see first name in slash A, last name in slash A. 
and then when we hit a key then it will just exit so hopefully this proves me out if it does anything at all there we go so first name in a last name in a excellent just what we thought it should do all right now what i was mentioning on the podcast is here's the part that is a little if you don't understand the differences between them this is where a public string variable which first name is up here this is just a variable first name this one is a property last name and this is where i'm going to show you the difference or not yet actually so let's do this we're going to say a person dot first name equal alan and then a person dot last name equal underwood so these look like they're the same and if we if we take this and we do another console write line on here when we run this application we're going to see that it spits out the na na for um for the first go around and then the next go around we should see alan underwood is the first and last name for this person that gets created so let's take a look here all right so i'm not crazy not yet anyways so that's exactly what we expected so the part here that i want to point out is these look like they're exactly the same right this a person dot first name equal alan and a person dot last name equal underwood the the way that they're called is exactly the same and if you look here the only difference here is this getting set on the end well that turns out to be pretty important so if we take a look at um where's my resharper stuff all right so here we go I had to restart Visual Studio because I had it running under the wrong user and I didn't have this stuff installed. So here's what I want to show you. So if we look at ReSharper now and we go to IL code, here's where we're going to see where this stuff differs quite a bit. So uh, oh, there it went, IL viewer. Let's stick that up there. All right, so check this out. Let's come over here to the person class. And the thing that's nice about IL Viewer and ReSharper is it will actually go to roughly where you point the lines of code, which is kind of cool. But really what we want to do is we want to look at this person class up here. So here's where you can see exactly how this stuff gets turned into the into the code that gets fed to the virtual machine that, that the .NET framework runs under. So here, if you look at this, first name, when we look at it over here, first name is just our variable. And as you can see right here, it's just listed as a variable, nothing special there. But then let's look at this last name one where we have the getters and setters. And unfortunately, I don't know why it kicked us back all the way down here. So here's, I'll show you a few things here. We'll scroll up in a second, but right here, property instance string last name. So you see, there's already a bunch more code. When it was just the first name, you just had that one thing saying that it was a public variable. Here we have this property instance string last name, and it's telling us this get instance string public property variable person. And it calls this internal method called get last name. And if we do a set, then it has this thing called set last name. And if we look back up here at the top, let's look at this. So here was our first one. Here's the backer field for this thing. So private string, last name, K underscore backing field. So you can see right there, there's some other things going on with these fields. And then here's that, that public method that actually gets used, but it's, it's hidden. So hide by signature, get last name and CIL managed. And then the same thing down here, you're going to see set last name, string value, and that's also managed. So really what you're getting here is the same thing that would happen in Java, except it's not, it's not visible. It's not explicit like in Java. So in Java, if you're creating a Java bean, typically if you have a variable like first name that you want to expose, you're going to have a private string first name, and then you're going to have a public 
string, get first name, public string, set first name. Same things happening here behind the scenes, but you don't reference it the same. And that's what I want. That's what I was getting at when we were talking about this on the podcast is it looks like you're doing the same exact thing. This one's just a string that's public. This one's actually calling a setter behind the scenes. So you can see here, look, actually, if I click this, when I say first name, it's just setting this, this one value first name. But when I'm doing this with the set last name, you can see here that it's calling a method called set last name and it's passing in the string Underwood. So that's a very big difference to keep in mind. Now to take it a step further, let's look at why that actually even matters. So if I were to come over here and again, because I'm using ReSharper, I can come up here on the class. I can right click it. And actually that here we go refactor and we can say extract and we're going to extract an interface. Now here's where you're going to see something interesting. It's going to create I person, but check it out. The only method that it can extract here is last name and well in two string because I overwrote it. It's not seen first name. First name is a public variable. It's not a method. So an interface cannot be given that contract to say, go get first name. It can't know about it. It's nothing that it can use. So this is a big deal here because now you can't abstract out first name. So if you had a, a manager as a type person, and then you had an employee as type person, and then maybe you had a contractor as type person, they wouldn't be able to use that first name. You couldn't pass in I person and get to the first name. And that's a big deal. That means that you lose your abstraction there. So basically what we were saying is you never ever want to use a variable as a public because you can't control it. And I'll show you something else here. So let's go ahead and make this better. Ah, duplicated. So let's make this better by making that also a property now. And so if we go back over here to the IL viewer, we'll now see that first name is also going to be backed. So here we have, oh, well, I haven't built it yet. So let's rebuild this thing. So when this is done, we should see that it will break apart this IL again. And now the first name, check it out. Let's go up to the very top here. So first name now has a backing field and then it also has the getters down here. And the setters right here. So again, these are important for that reason. But now the cool part is let's say that we wanted to put some logic behind this. You could actually do that. But more importantly, now you can abstract this stuff away. So if we say refactor and we're going to extract and we're going to extract this interface and we're going to do I person. Now you have all of these available, right? So let's place this in another file and All right, so we'll see here now that this is automatically going to implement the iPerson interface. And iPerson now, we can see that we have a first name and a last name. So now if you wanted, you could basically pass in an iPerson and access that. So now everything still looks the same. Nothing's changed here in terms of how it works, but a lot is going on behind the scenes here in terms of what that actually means. And that's a big deal. So knowing the difference between what an actual public variable versus a public property is can pay dividends in the long run, because now I could actually pass around instances of I person. So if I said, if I did this right here, now all of a sudden you're going to be able to use the same thing. So let's go ahead and run this again. 
and we should see that the output's exactly the same. But I'll show you something interesting here in a second. So everything works just as it did last time, which is good. That's what you want to see. No surprises. But let's say that we go back over here and let's do what we said before. And let's get rid of person as having that. It's now just a string. Now this is going to bark at us and tell us that we haven't implemented everything. Right? What, what, what does it say? Implement missing members. So there's a problem because now all of a sudden it's saying that it doesn't exist. And of course we know because we just went through this whole thing that it's because first name isn't there. All right. So no big deal. We take that out. But guess what? Now I person no longer has this, this method first name that can be accessed. So, so if you were to do this without having that public property there, I person would no longer have access to this because remember behind the scenes, first name is really a method that's being called when you're doing it like this, when there's an equal sign for an operator and assignment operator, that's saying, all right, call the set method of first name. When you're doing this console dot right line down here and it's doing a person, it's going to use the get method for first name. So again, it's just, it's really just a nice way to go about things to make your code a little bit more concise in C sharp, but there are differences. So I hope you got something out of this. I mean, it'll add a little bit of insight as to what Michael and myself were talking about on the podcast. And if you haven't listened to it, go, I think that there's a lot of good information to be had there. So that's pretty much all I have here. There, there wasn't really, um, a whole lot for getting major programming stuff out of the way, but maybe, maybe this will shed some light on why it's important to use methods. Oh, and, and so let's say one last thing before I go here, uh, let's say that you did want to do something special. Say that when somebody puts in the name that you actually want to do something special here. So we're going to say, uh, private string, first name and set we're going to say underscore first name equal value dot to upper well I'll call it value dot to upper I can never remember if it's two upper case or two upper and then get, we actually need to change this now because it's backed and we're going to say return first name, right? Okay. Oh, and I spelled that wrong. That's why I was complaining. All right. So here's the interesting thing, right? Now, again, because we have this interface here, it only cares that there is this first name. It doesn't care about the implementation, but it's there. And so now in the program, we went in and this now should get uppercase when it gets set. So when we run this thing now, without any kind of hard work on the part of anybody that's doing this, we automatically can uppercase the thing. And, and maybe that's not all that useful here, but you might want to do something like, uh, what's it called? Uh, there is a two title case that does not exist in .NET Core, ironically enough, but it is in the previous version of .NET. But you can see there, it automatically uppercased that for me. So again, I want to point out that here, I am not, I am using I person, right? It created a new person object, but just because I did this, that setter, when that thing came in here, the setter itself was saying, okay, take whatever value came in, uppercase it, and then put it in the backing variable there. So just some of the power of it, when you use the abstractions and use the public properties properly, then you kind of set yourself up for success in the future. And it allows you to leverage abstractions a little bit better. And, and here now you can at least see this. And if you've never seen this IL stuff before, 
Uh, one thing I do want to point out is you don't necessarily have to have ReSharper to do this. ReSharper is awesome. Uh, it gives you a ton of functionality, but there's also a free tool called IL Spy, which I believe I have installed here. So if we go here and we look at IL Spy and we run this, you could actually see the same thing. If you go in and compile, compile your code, and then you say, let's open and let's go to documents, projects, source, then debug. And let's look at this thing. So it'll decompile this and then you should be able to, oops, Uh, let's take a look here. So we should be able to see. All right, so check it out. Here we go, person. Let's take a look at person. So check it out. Here we go, person. It has a private string. Well, we did that, so that's all fine. But let's look at last name. So it's got this get set, right? So you can see there that it is a backed variable, which is awesome. Um, I don't know what else you see. Oh, okay, so here, check it out. So underscore first name, you can see there that that's a variable. This is a property, first name string, last name. You can also see these. So the nice thing about IL Spy too is it breaks it down in a really nice hierarchy here that you see. So just in case, if you don't have ReSharper and you don't want to fork out the cash for it, you still have the option to be able to come in here and look at these things and see exactly what's going on. So you can see all the data that's coming in and out of this thing and, you know, exactly how it's all set up. So very, it's a very nice tool. It's free. You can download it. I'll put a link down here in the bottom of the video and, you know, Again, hopefully you got something out of this if, if you do. And, you know, please subscribe to the channel. If there's anything that you'd like us to talk about or do a video on, please do share that also down below. Also, make sure you head over to www.codingblocks.net and check out our podcast. We're in iTunes, Stitcher, all over the place. And we plan on bringing more and more of this content out. So, you know. Again, hope, hopefully you learned something and we'd love to hear from you. So please do leave a comment below. Give us a thumbs up if you like this and we will see you next time. Thanks.